it's time to set up the health. Add a float value, set it to 100, and name it health. This is the enemy's health. Next, create an event for any damage. Here, we're going to create some logic to subtract damage from the total health. We will also add logic to check if the player is already dead, below 0 HP, or if he has died on that instance of damage. We will create a custom event called death, and we will run this event when we do damage to the enemy and it dies. Inside this death event, we will set the mesh to go ragdoll, as well as removing the collision from the capsule component. Next, we want to make sure the collision channel on our mesh is set to block visibility traces, so it works with the trace channel the first person example uses by default in its line trace bullet function. Then, inside the first person example blueprint, be sure to set the weapon damage down to a more reasonable number like 100. This value is used to multiply the impulse applied to the ragdoll, and this will give better results. And finally, we will modify the code, and we are going to add a sequence node, and then cast to our new enemy, applying a damage value of 20. After 5 shots, we should find that our enemy will cast the death event and go ragdoll. The best way to spawn a Niagara emitter is not by using the spawn emitter attach function, but by having a separate actor, which controls your particles. In this case, I have BP underscore droplets, which contains a Niagara emitter component, and on begin play, it will upgrade the Niagara emitter with the 14 different parameters I provide the class, allowing me to modify or randomize the way my particles behave with no extra effort. Once you spawn this class, use the hit location as the particle location, and the impact normal as the rotation for the particle. You can also attach it to any part of the skeletal mesh, whereas spawning the system will attach it to a bone. Attaching the emitter actor to the enemy using the attach actor to component function is the next step. Use the hit component as the parent and the hit bone name as the socket name, and assign the transform rules to keep world. When you test it out, you should see that the particles are spawning in the direction of the hit normal and at the exact point of the trace. Not only that, the particles should be following the bone and the actor as they move, either via animation or ragdoll.